people can change. What do you mean? I mean, do you think people can change something about themselves, or do you think that we always just are, you know, who we are? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it kind of depends on what it is you want to change. Well, like, did you ever want to change something about yourself? Are we having a deep conversation? You might. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's always something that we want to change. Today, a very talented yeah. filmmaker is making a big splash with 14 titles under his belt. His name is Jay Diaz, and he has produced and directed projects such as Casual and the Indies, but I'll let him talk about uh, all of his latest ventures. Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So tell me about Casual. I watched it on the web and it's just, it's a phenomenal show. Right, thank you. How, how did it get started? Um, it's funny actually, it started um, just as an initial short film. It was supposed to only be actually just a five minute short. Um, at the time I was kind of going through some stuff personally and I just went through a breakup. So it was kind of a figuring out what you know where I was going so the first episode which is called change was just about a conversation I was really having with myself um, about changing and whether people can really change themselves and that's all that's pretty much how it started and everything else just kind of kept coming so tell me about your cast I noticed that you have some uh, some very talented uh, cast members yeah indeed uh, Brian Thomas Smith who plays the lead uh, the lead guy um, I've worked with him on a number of projects. I actually just met him um, only about two or three years ago, and we just kind of started this working relationship. I loved working with him. He was really easy to work with, and he kind of knew, you know, what I wanted out of him. Um, so I've been good friends with him for a while now. And Lauren, I met through Brian, actually. Uh, they used to do a class together, and we were kind of looking for someone new to actually uh, um, start on these new projects that we were working on and we instantly kind of like had this chemistry together We had a lot of things in common and so I knew that she was a uh, Well, your casting was was pretty right on because uh, you know, they, they really gelled they really worked together very well So so it, it made for a for a great uh, great piece. So tell me about it. Where, where's it going from here? Well, uh, we're actually in our third and final season um, we, were, we decided only to only do uh, three seasons, uh, mainly because um, we wanted to keep it really tight. You know, I didn't want to kind of stretch the storyline out as much as it is. It's a very simple story about a guy and a girl and their relationship. Um, so we only want to show certain pieces about the relationship. So we're in our third and final season. It's actually in its uh, third of five episodes now. So we have two episodes left before our big uh, The big finale, finale right? Yeah, so, which everyone's really anticipating. Um, we also just came out of the Holly Shorts Film Festival, um, uh, which where we screened, and we're actually um, really proud of that. It's our second time there in a festival. Um, last year we were there for the Indies, so right. people are liking our stuff. So. Yeah, so you're keeping busy. Tell me about the Indies. What's what's that about? The Indies is actually about four friends who are trying to make movies, but they're not necessarily good at it. <laughs> what the hell was that? It was a dumb commercial. That dumb commercial is what gets us paid. You boys fighting again? No, fighting some of our problems right now. Sean Casserman? So, I see you have a lot of projects under your belt, but they all seem to be with the same production company. I, uh, I do a lot of work for them. Dramas, comedies, action thrillers, and horror. Yeah. Screaming. No screaming. Less screaming. Uh, less? We, we know there's a strangle. You don't need to keep referencing. you got to stop with the sound effects. They didn't like it. What? Maybe somebody should have uh, consulted his business partner before making a bunch of rash decisions. You have something against beauty? No, but I'm doing you a favor here. Hey, Sean. What is it? Chick bugs me out. Hey, if it wasn't for her, West Side Strangler wouldn't have the gore it does. I think Sean's really into you. Yeah, keep at it. Really? No. What do we got? Any projects? An infomercial kit. I know this isn't what you thought we'd be doing, but it's something. I'm not sure. I know we can do this. Have you got anything else you can show me? Not my pain. I don't want to feel not with us. So it's a comedy based on, you know, loosely based on our <laughs> adventures. Yeah, make sure you say loosely based on that, yeah. right? So, yeah, so it's loosely based on uh, kind of like the adventures that we kind of went through in, in the early stages of filmmaking where we didn't really know what we were doing. Um, so it's just done in a very funny way, but also very genuine and has a lot of heart to it too. So. Now, speaking uh, about not really knowing what, what 
we're, we're doing. I mean, we, none of us really know what we're really doing, right? But um, there are people that aspire to be filmmakers or to be entertainers, to be singers, comedians, and so forth, who are not exposed to, to Hollywood or any major cities where uh, you know, they, they can have access to the arts, right? So what kind of advice would you have for those type of people that aspire to be filmmakers, but may not necessarily have the means or the, the knowledge, the know-how of how to get started? Uh, that's a good question, actually, because I sometimes ask myself that. Uh, I think any advice that I would say is to just have that drive and that passion to do it. As long as you're loving what you're doing, I think that's all that really matters. I mean, we're doing these things because we love it. You know, we're not here to try and make um, you know, anything from it other than just making them. You know, we're not here for fame, we're not here for the money, we're here because we love doing these and that's why I think uh, people get out of it when they see our stuff. Right, but let's not forget that, that uh, even if we're not here for the money, and that's what I used to say when I first got started, right. you, know, in the, you know, about 10 years ago or so, uh, my first feature film when I discussed it with an investor, I said, you know what, I don't care about the money, you keep all the profit, I don't, you know, and, and I've learned that the money is the most important thing of the filmmaking process because if you don't have the money then you can't you can't accomplish your vision True. so now i always when i sit down at the negotiating table i say well no i want to go to the bank my friend you know so, <laughs> so show me the money right the famous yeah. line right so uh, but i'd like to talk to you a little bit about what was the defining moment of your career i think it was kind of came from the indies. Um, prior to that, we'd only done a couple short films and they weren't necessarily the best well-produced things and the indies was the first time we attempted to do something really big. Um, it, was only, it was a short film slash pilot um, and we actually screened it at a movie theater in Santa Monica and we made it this big deal. We had a lot of people, we packed the house, everyone came to the theater to support it and it was the first time I was able to get instant feedback from an audience who didn't know what they were going to watch. Right. And to sit there in a theater and to kind of see everyone laughing where the, where the jokes are and really enjoying yeah. it and coming to me after, I'm like, oh my God, that was like so great. Yeah. I think that was the moment where I felt like we, need, we knew we had something here and we knew that we could do something right. entertaining. Isn't that a great feeling though, when you sit in a dark movie theater and you see the people on screen say the words that you wrote maybe yeah. a year it's, or two years ago? It's surreal, really, <laughs> honestly. I, I never would have guessed that that would be somewhere where we would be right now. It's, it's very, very surreal. Filmmakers usually get very caught up in the lights and the cameras and the, uh, the storyline and, and getting on the set and producing, right? But they don't necessarily think about what's going to happen next. You know, how are they going to recuperate the money that they just spent on, on having all these people, the, the, the pizza and, and, and beer that they bought, right, for, for the cast and crew. So the question is, what do you do with, with, with your projects? Well, um, for Casual specifically, we actually have this big idea of actually putting all the episodes together and actually making it into a feature. Um, I think we have enough material to actually put everything together and still have a storyline that follows um, like a feature would. And that's kind of the idea we had early on in the season when I initially only thought we were going to do one season, that was it. And it was my, supposed to be my swan song and that was it. Um, but we kind of kept going. And I, 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 with season two and season three, I actually started writing it more like a feature and kind of just kind of showing it in pieces. So I think the goal right now for casual at least is to make it into a feature and then pitch it that way or go to film festivals. Right, and how was uh, the Hollywood Shorts uh, festival? Well, the Shorts was great. We actually, yesterday was our screening and um, it was great. We, we were up against um, nine other uh, webisodes and we find out tomorrow actually if uh, we win or not. Well, that's great. I, I really appreciate you uh, sharing this with us. Is there any, anything else that you want to share with the audience? First of all, where can they find you? Uh, you can find Casual at casualseries.com and then we also, for the indies, we did a couple other webisodes um, and that's, you can either find it on Hulu or at um, indiestv.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Jay, thank for you. joining us. I really appreciate you coming down. And thank you guys for watching Aspiring Hollywood. Come back next week to see more great inter interviews such as uh, the one with Jay Diaz here. And uh, take a look at Casual. It's a great, great uh, short. Until next time, I'm Luciano Saber for Aspiring Hollywood.